The original Planet of the Apes movie features one of the most iconic endings ever, but the many sequels and reboots that followed often tried to, um, ape that classic twist. They range from weird to insane to just plain puzzling, and we're gonna rank them. But we're leaving War for the Planet of the Apes out for now, just because we don't want to spoil it for you guys yet. Otherwise, let's break down the craziest Planet of the Apes endings. The rebooted series starring Andy Serkis as Caesar hasn't quite matched the originals in terms of off-the-hook endings, but it has had its moments. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes closes on a very somber, disquieting note as Caesar realizes that he's failed in his mission to avoid war with mankind. The camera moves into a close-up of his eyes, reflecting the opening shot of the film, as the ape leader looks at his followers below and ponders their uncertain future. It's a chilling, tragic moment. That Dawn ending is sort of mirrored in this one, which brought the original five film series to a close. After John Huston, in full ape makeup as the lawgiver, offers up a final speech that doesn't make a ton of sense, a statue of the now long dead Caesar cries a single tear as the image freeze frames in true 1970s movie form. Creepy. While it's certainly the worst Planet of the Apes movie, Tim Burton's 2001 reboot does not have the worst ending. It just has the most confusing one, as Mark Wahlberg's astronaut finally escapes from his ape captors and seemingly makes it back to his own Earth, only to find that apes are in control here as well using modern technology. Well, more or less. And Tim Roth's bad guy is now memorialized as uh, Ape Abraham Lincoln for some reason. It's obviously an attempt to recapture the magic of the original film's finale, but the only problem here is it doesn't make any narrative sense. Like, at all. We can take some comfort, however, in the fact that Wahlberg's character is apparently still trapped on that planet somewhere, with no sequel ever coming to rescue him. The first Andy Serkis movie ended in a fairly traditional fashion, with Caesar and his apes escaping to the woods to hopefully live their lives in peace. But in a mid credit scene, it's revealed that the virus which made the apes smart has now begun to spread across the planet. That's bad news for the humans, since that same virus is lethal to most of them. Portrayed as an animated infographic, it's an unsettling finish that sets up mankind's inevitable downfall in this world. Back to the original series, Conquest culminates in the first ape rebellion against their human masters. Led by Roddy McDowell's Caesar, the simian slaves fight back, leaving carnage in their wake. As the city burns behind Caesar, he makes a speech that is all the more strange because of the way it's shot, cutting to tight close-ups of Caesar's eyes. And while he decides that the apes will resist violence for now, the original cut of the film had him doing the opposite. Hence the strange editing, as the filmmakers had to obscure McDowell's mouth when they added less inflammatory dialogue in post-production. Tonight, we have seen the birth of the planet of the apes. Welcome, gentlemen, to the United States. All right, strap in because now we're taking this to 11. Escape from the Planet of the Apes took the lovable Cornelius and Zira from the first film and plopped them into modern day Earth. It was sort of a reversal of the original movie's premise and Escape functions as a fish out of water comedy for much of its running time. But then things go dark fast. The apes find themselves on the run from a nasty government agent and it all culminates with our heroes getting mercilessly shot to death with their baby chimp. My God, stop him. And yet, that's not all, as in the final moments of the film, we learn that the apes had pulled a switcheroo and that the baby was safe and sound and talking in a weird, nightmare-inducing film loop. Mama, 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 mama. Also, Escape was rated G, which meant real-life human babies were even allowed to watch this horror show. Charlton Heston didn't want to come back for a sequel to the first film, but he was convinced to return for bookend scenes in Beneath under the agreement that his character Taylor would die once and for all. And so he did die, very badly, with a bunch of machine gun fire to the chest. Is his heart he's freaking holding there? His girlfriend Nova, who he'd also been cheering for for two films, had just bought it a few minutes earlier, which didn't sit very well with Taylor at all. And his pal Brent, played by James Franciscus as a kind of Taylor Light and our identifying character for most of the film, gets it right between the eyes. So Taylor, in one final act of skewed Heston heroics, sets off a super nuke that destroys the entire planet. The screenwriters were gonna have to work overtime to come up with a sequel to that move. <laughs> And finally, of course, we have the original mind of an ending. It's hard to appreciate now, a half century later, what seeing that image of the ruined Statue of Liberty on the beach must have been like. It's become so embedded in our pop culture landscape in the years since. Still, it comes as no surprise that Twilight Zone creator Rod Serling co-wrote the script for the original Planet of the Apes. The reveal that Taylor 
and the audience had been on Earth all along had to have been a stunner in 1968. Damn you all to hell! And it still is, even today. It also set the mold for a grand tradition of crazy Planet of the Apes endings that has carried on ever since. For even more on Planet of the Apes, be sure to check out our review of War for the Planet of the Apes, or take a look at our trailer commentary for the film with director Matt Reeves. And be sure to subscribe to your IGM platform of choice for all your movie, TV, and comics needs.